All right, what's going on, everybody? Hurricane fans and hurricane haters alike. I don't discriminate. You're all welcome on my channel. I hope you're all having a good week. Tomorrow night, we have a very rare installment of Friday Night Canes football. And Miami travels up to Raleigh, North Carolina to face the very tough and upset-minded NC State Wolfpack. Now, NC State's coming into this game at 4-2. and two. Um, They just did recently lose their starting quarterback, Devin Leary, to, in all likelihood, a season-ending injury. And in his place, they will be starting Bailey Hockman, who is a freshman. He did get some playing time against North Carolina. Um, I thought for a freshman, it looked pretty good. But uh, he is still a freshman. He's inexperienced. And that's going to be uh, a focus of this game to really put pressure on him, attack and force him into bad throws. Now, I'm not going to lie. This game does have me a little nervous. It's on an odd day. It's on a Friday night. We're coming off a bye week, and we all know how much this team struggles coming off of a bye under Manny Diaz. Um, it's tough to explain. I'm not, I'm not sure why that happens. I'm not sure why we come out so flat coming off of a bye week, but that has to stop. All right, if Manny Diaz wants to have a successful career, here at Miami, and I think he will, honestly. I, th I think he's improved and uh, and made some strides as a head coach over the last year and a half, but this is a really important game for many reasons. Number one, obviously coming off the bye, he, he, this would be his first win uh, after a bye week, so that just by itself that's important. But number two, I think this is that turning point game that we have almost every year where if we lose, we end up just falling apart and losing like four out of our last five. Um, or if we win, we could end up finishing strong and all of a sudden nine and two or 10 and one and going to an ACC title game looks a lot more realistic. All right, so I think, I don't, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm uh, exaggerating when I say that this is in all likelihood the most important game in Manny Diaz's head coaching career so far. Because like I said, this season can go in one of two directions. We lose this game, I can see us bottoming out and finishing 8-3, and 7-4, and four, which would be a colossal disappointment. Or we win, we go 6-1, and one. that looks a hell of a lot better than 5-2, and two. and all of a sudden we start to separate ourselves from the rest of the pack in the ACC. And then it starts to look more like Clemson, Miami, and then everybody else. Which in my opinion is how it should look and how it should have looked over the past decade. Now, two keys to victory in this game. Um, number one, NC State gives up over 260 passing yards per game. Their secondary is vulnerable. They're not good against the pass. And they like to employ a 3-3-5 stack defense. What does that mean? The 3-3-5, three, three, three down linemen, three linebackers, and five DBs. They like to have that extra defender in there to defend against the pass, to defend against these athletes and these faster pace offenses in the ACC. Um, now, Miami does have athletes. We all know that. We do get Brevin Jordan back. So look for Miami to have Brevin and Will Mallory on the field at the same time to really challenge that defense. Like I've said in past videos, I think Miami needs to go back to its bread and butter, which is the quick passing attack. Um, I think we need to get De'Aaron King in a rhythm early so that he's not, you know, misfiring and looks shaky early in the game and we have to wait till the fourth quarter for him to really get into a rhythm kind of like what happened against Pittsburgh I don't want to see any of that I want to see him get into a rhythm early if it's got to be quick slants bubble screens whatever works I want to see us throw it more on first down that'll get him in a rhythm and it will force NC State to adjust to us not the other way around I don't want to get into a four-quarter battle with what I believe, while they're a tough team, I still think they're an inferior opponent. This is a game we should be winning by double digits, okay? So make them adjust to us, and they don't have the athletes to cover a guy like Brevin Jordan or Will Mallory one-on-one, -on -one. Um, and they don't have the athletes to keep up with us on the outside. So if we are able to spread out that defense and make them focus on the pass, then look for us to get some chunk plays on the ground. All right, so that's key number one. Number two, defense, I mean, just keep doing what you're doing. They've been doing this bend but don't break kind of thing, and for the most part, it's been working. They make stops. They hold teams to field goals. They get their one or two takeaways a game that kind of ice it, and we put some solid pressure on the quarterback, so we need to keep doing that. One thing I would change maybe, 
is, and I've said this before, I want to see a little more aggressiveness on defense, some more blitzes, maybe some, you know, some corner or safety blitzes, be more exotic with it, throw off this young QB. It, we will force him into bad throws if we do that. Blake Baker came out and said that Zach McLeod and Bradley Jennings, they need to quote unquote, cut it loose a little bit more, meaning he thinks they've been holding back. They've been playing a little tight. He says they just got to read their keys, believe it, be confident, and just go. Don't think too much. Um, and I would agree with that. He also did mention that Corey Flagg and Sam Brooks, um, he indicated that they should be getting more playing time and more snaps, that we'll see that continue. Uh, I was happy to hear that about Flagg because, to me, that might indicate that he will likely be available for this game. I don't know for sure. We'll see. They will release a list of who is available and who is not uh, right before kickoff. I heard it's like an hour before kickoff that we'll know for sure. But if we can get Corey Flagg into the lineup, I will be very happy because he's one of my favorite linebackers on the team. And I think he's the best pass defense linebacker. Um, he's very valuable, and I think we need to have him in there. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys. Pretty simple. Defense, keep doing what you're doing. Put pressure on the QB. Offense, let the pass set up the run. We do that, we'll be okay. My prediction, I think Miami wins this game 31-22. to I think it's going to be a little bit more of a, I don't want to say domination necessarily, but it's we're going to control most of this game, and it's going to be... Um, it's not going to be as close as the score would indicate. Okay, maybe they get a couple of garbage field goals towards the end of the game, NC State does, and uh, we end up winning 31 to 22. That's my prediction. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy the game tomorrow. As always, it's all about the U. Go Kings. <laughs>